Hey, it is me, Jespo, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today is another redstone video, and I will be demonstrating and showing you guys how to make redstone mobile bases. So let's get right into it. So this over here is a mobile base. This is just a small demonstration one I created to showcase for you guys. But these are some of my most favorite redstone contraptions right here. I think they're just super cool that you can have a completely functioning base moving through the sky. That, in my opinion, is just awesome. So let's get right into the demonstration. So this thing is made up of two different things. The like carriage module type system, which is this, or this, or this. Those are all modules in the engine, which is this thing back here. This is a little more complex than those, obviously, but I'll explain it all later and show you guys how to make it. So how this works is the engine back here is what moves the whole machine forward, hence it's being called the engine. It powers the whole system. So that's going to push these modules, and the modules are going to get pushed forward by that engine. So overall, it's a relatively simple system. And like I say, I'll show you guys how to make it later on in the video. But so for a quick demonstration, let's just get right into this. To turn this type of engine on, all you have to do is flip this trap door right here, like that. And now, as you can see, the entire system is moving forward at a pretty good pace. It's not insanely fast, but you can cover some good ground over long periods of time, and obviously it's AFKable since there's no reason that you need to be standing there while it's moving. So as you can see, the entire system is going forward. It only can travel in one straight line right now, because if you were to make it be able to go in four or even two directions, it would be an insanely complex system. So I just decided to keep it simple and do only forward on this one. So yeah. So as you can see, the entire system very smoothly moves forward, nothing wrong with it. As long as you have a relatively good computer or device that you're playing Bedrock Edition on, it should work really relatively fine. So in order to stop this machine, all you have to do is come up here, place one block anywhere in the engine, and as you can see, now the whole machine is stopped. So why that is, for a more advanced um, explanation, is because pistons can only push 12 blocks, and in front of this piston right here, there's actually 12 blocks. So yeah, I won't get too far into the details about that, but that will come into play later on. So now we might as well get into the how to build side of things. So these things are actually very easy to build as soon as you get past the engine parts. Then it gets super simple. So all you have to do, really, is um, make the engine and then you can add as many carriages as you want. Like legit, this thing can go on infinitely. So resources you're gonna wanna have, pistons, honey blocks or slime blocks will work, any other block of your choice, and then whatever you're gonna wanna put in your base. Oh, also observers, observers are necessary too. So I'm just gonna build off of this real quick and we can start on the tutorial part. So, okay. So you obviously have to build this thing a few blocks off the ground since it is a flying machine. You don't want it to get stuck against blocks on the ground. And if you're going to make this in, say, an infinite world, you're going to have to build it um, relatively high up. Like, say, about 120 blocks or above, I think. That's roughly how high world terrain generation goes right now, but that will be changing soon. So I have no idea what it's going to be in 1.17. Anyway. Let's get started on the tutorial, and you're going to obviously start by making your engine. So first step, place the observer there. Next, you're going to want to go behind with a sticky piston. Either slime blocks or honey blocks will work here. I'll use honey. Go three blocks out. Break the middle one. Place the observer. Now break that honey block or slime block. Then you place a piston there. Honey block there. Two more honey blocks. And then a observer, make sure that one's facing out that way. So the arrow will be facing back. And bam, that's the entire engine finished right there. So this will move by itself, and I will demonstrate that by real quick placing the, actually the last part of the engine. This part's not necessary, but I would suggest you use a trapdoor in the final product. So as you can see, this now moves by itself. And I'm going to need obsidian to stop that. And let's stop that. So yeah, that is a completely functioning thing by itself. As you can see now, if I flip the trap door, it turns on. Just like the other one over there. So let's stop that again. Uh-oh, I accidentally placed that through the honey block. Let me just fix that real quick. There we go. Okay, well, I'm breaking this. Probably should stop. 
Okay, so yeah, that's the engine done. Next, you're going to have to add the thing that pushes the modules forward. So these are the modules, either that little crafting module I got there, the platform, or the storage module I have. Those are all modules, and you have to have something to push them forward. That is what this piece is right there, these two blocks, and that one also. So what you do is, this is even simpler than the last step. All you have to do is make sure this thing doesn't accidentally activate by itself, so I'd suggest breaking that piston. That will be replaced later. Then placing any type of block right here. I'll be using smooth stone for that. Then an observer, then a piston. Now that's it. So you can place your sticky piston back, and it is done. So that is the entire engine done right there. So that is what's going to push your mobile base forward. So now that that's done, you should... um start working on the modules of the mobile base. So for our first module, I think we will do a relatively basic storage module. Those are one of the easier ones to make and also one of the more useful ones because obviously you're going to be picking up a lot of random stuff if you're playing in survival. So for a storage module, here's the simplest design you can make right now and I'll be showing that one but of course these are dynamic so as long as it is under 12 blocks for pushing it should be able to work for this mobile base so what I mean by that is pistons can only push 12 blocks and I'll demonstrate that right now so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's 12 blocks and you place the lever and boom it can push that but if you try and add one more to it, so right there, it can no longer push that. So that comes into play during fly well, building flying machines and mobile bases, because if this has to push over 12 blocks, it won't work, and the whole machine will collapse in on itself, and that would not be good. So, let's see, we got one block here, two, three, four, four, <laughs> there we go, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so I'm going to stop at nine, because that is nine blocks right there, but remember, we also have to have another one of these, because that's what's going to push our mo next modules forward, or else it won't work. So that's nine, and if I could just place that, oh no, it's, uh oh, <laughs> so, um, oops, I'll just build up real quick, nine, Jeez, this is more difficult than I thought it would be, ten, there we go. 11. So I'm going to stop at 11 blocks. I mean, technically, I could add another chest in there. Eh, might as well. There's no point in not. So there we go. 12 blocks. That is a 12 block storage module. So, and that is something you could add to your mobile base if you want to. Let's do a quick check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 blocks. Therefore, that piston will be able to push it. So for our next module, let's go out another two blocks. Oh, another thing you should be wary of so this these blocks always have to be one away from the piston every module has to be one away from the piston or else so if it wasn't one away from a piston this would not be counted this wouldn't be able to push that because that would technically now be 13 blocks since these are touching it's kind of confusing but just remember always keep your next module one block with a one block gap between that and the last one so for our next module, I think we'll make a crafting module like we had over there. So for crafting modules, we should add some basic things that are very useful for crafting. Of course, the crafting table. And then we can also throw in a furnace, a blast furnace, and why not a cartography table? Who knows? We might want to be mapping out different locations we find in the future. So um, now you need something for these different tables to get stuck on so it can be pushed. So that will be our honey box in this situation. So then you can place crafting table, blast furnace, normal furnace, cartography table, and now that is a functioning module. So next you got to make sure it can push the next one. So of course you do that and then piston. And that is the entire crafting module done right there. So that one wasn't as difficult, but it's still an interesting thing, good thing to have, so you can smelt up all your items, craft your tools, whatnot. So that is two modules done, and remember, these things can go on infinitely. It's not like they're limited to a certain amount of modules. Well, as long as they don't go out of your render distance, but that shouldn't happen if you're playing on a good device. So for our next module, let's go two blocks out, and just like that one over there, we're going to also add a platform. So this platform you can use to place beds on if you want to take a 
quick nap while you are on the flying machine. Notice your flying machine must be stopped in order to actually sleep because beds cannot be pushed by pistons. So what I would suggest is either storing a bed in a chest or your inventory, and then you can stop the machine for the night and quickly sleep in your bed. So that is the next platform right there. And say you can even add a chest out front if you want to place your beds in there. So that would work. You can now have a little storage area for all your beds. Another extremely useful thing to have on a flying machine is a water dropper. Now, of course, if you're playing in, like, say, a survival world on one of these mobile bases, you're going to have to wait to get have a way to get up and down from your flying machine. So the best way to do that is a water dropper. If you place this, break that block, place a dispenser right there, break that block, and place a target block right there, then put a water bucket in the dispenser, it should now be able to get you up and down from your flying machine like a portable ladder system. How you activate this is take any type of projectile weapon, so a bow or even snowballs or eggs will work in this situation, and all you have to do is hit that target real quick. Where are snowballs? They're in here. So yeah, as you can see, I shoot that, the water goes down, so now I can get up and down from the flying machine, just like that. And to turn it off, you just hit it with another projectile. So it could be an arrow or it could be a snowball. And now it turns off. So there is a very simple mobile base that you can build in your survival worlds. And so, yeah, that's pretty basic. That is the whole tutorial done using this thing. So, of course, to start it, you have to go over here and flip this trap door. And now that will start moving forward. As you can see, the whole base is cruising onward. And to stop it, all you have to do is either come up here and place a obsidian block, or if you want to make it even easier to stop, you can make sure that this piston, in front of it, there are 12 blocks between that gap and this piston. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 8 blocks in front of this piston and behind that module. And go 9, 10, 11, and 12. So what that does, now if you place another block there, it will be 13 blocks, and this piston can no longer push the front of the engine. So for demonstration, it's moving on fine, and then it just stops, just like that. So you could even do that with a dirt block if you want to have a super quick and easy mine, or any other block that would work for that trick. So yeah, that is today's video. That's all I got for now, and goodbye!